Okay guys, Sunday the 29th of October and we are on the FTSE 100. So let's have a quick recap of this market from last week in relation to our Sunday analysis and then we'll have a look at the market for the trading week ahead. Now as we get into this week's video, one of the things I should point out, especially because I am now in these videos, is that you're going to most likely see a lot more of my trusted sidekick, the very large um, Lion King Cup which is always filled with coffee when I am at the charts, especially on an early Sunday morning. So the FTSE 100 from last week, we were looking at the range of price action. So we're testing at resistance. We were also testing down towards support. Let me just mark this in. Uh, it was down to 7516 we marked in last week, I believe. So around about here. And then what we went over was that whilst within these levels, we could continue to look at the FTSE as though within a range. What we also went over was how the market was starting to give us signs of weakness. And if we broke down below this level of support, we could look for the move down into previous lows at around about 7,485. And then we also went over how key support came in down toward 7,430 for a longer term or medium term move, whatever you want to call it. Now, the FTSE broke below those levels. Um, and then you can see on the Wednesday, we had that strong move down almost exactly to the 7,430 levels before we found support. Now, the only other thing I looked at last week with subscribers was on the Friday, so the market had pulled down, it had tested out this key support and we'd seen the bull step in on the Wednesday and then again on the Thursday, we had a very, very strong bullish movement. However, coming back up into these levels, I just went over with subscribers how it was key resistance and we could look for weakness and potential sell positions. Now, for me personally, I did not manage to take a position up at these levels. So we can see the FTSE pressed up into the 7516 once again and then the seller stepped in. However, the, the price action on the lower frame, time frames just didn't line up enough for me to get into a trade. And that is all part of trading. It's important to understand that, you know, when you're looking at trading, you can have perfect analysis. The market can, you know, make that longer term move that you were looking for. But then when it comes into your support and resistance level, you're looking for the position and it just doesn't line up enough. So you skip the trade. Um, it's so, so important, you know, it's, it's more important for me to skip an imperfect position than to get into a trade which ends up being a losing trade. You know, first and foremost, as a trader, um, you need to be willing to miss out on trades because really the most important aspect is protecting your account. When that account disappears, <laughs> there's no way to continue trading. So coming into next week now on the FTSE, we still have this key level of resistance up above and this key level of support down below. So what we are potentially seeing is the market making that strong upward movement and then pulling back to retest the previous swing after a bullish move higher. So there is the potential oops, for the FTSE to continue with its bullish run. Now, really, for me, I would like to see the FTSE breaking these previous highs, if that were the case. If we did see that break of those previous highs and the pullback, I'd be happy to look for support. And then really the move up toward at least 7,580, but more than likely um, 7,590 and potentially creating a new high past that 7,600 tag. So into next week, this level remains key resistance. If we break up above, more than happy to look for support and that move higher up into those all time highs. This level remains key resistance coming into next week. It's only if we start to break above here that the market is giving us small signs that it is beginning to turn bullish once again. Whilst below here, the market is still bearish. More than happy to look for those sell positions. Now, if we see the weakness, we've been given a clue as to that key support area. It's confirmed the 7430 level for us. And it's given us the really upper band of that support and resistance zone up into around about 7,445. Key support, if we start to make that move down once again, if we start to break down below those levels, again, support breaking very often becomes resistance. We can look for weakness and those movements down. Now, 
in between these three areas. So really for me, looking at these one, two, and three, these are now the key levels on the FTSE. Um, however, there are other levels of support and resistance more than worthwhile watching. So we really have one sitting around about here. Now, if you've been watching these videos for any length of time, you'll remember we went over after this pause on the 4th of October, we broke up. It was giving us the clue that this was potentially going to be a level of support and resistance moving forward. And we came back, we tested, we bounced. We actually tested it on the 19th of October also. And then on the 27th of October, once again, we have tested. So this level remains good support. And then it's if we start to break down below this level, really, that I would expect the weakness to come back into the FTSE. And I would start to look for that stronger move back down, at least into 7460. And you know, likely down into 7448, so 7450, and retesting this previous key zone. So level right here, and um, support and resistance. So key one, key one, key one. If we just mark these in, key, key, and key. All three of these also. If we break down below, I'd be happy to look at it as resistance. Break up above as support. Break up above as support. And then really in between these two key levels up here. So if we do start to break up above this area, this area becomes important at around about 7545 to 7540, or maybe a bit lower, 7535. This is, so what I tend to have is key levels of support and resistance one and two, and then almost always, very often at least, there'll be a sort of what I call a central pivot in between. So it's it's almost, this would be resistance, this would be resistance. If we break above, this would be support, this would be resistance. And then in between, we've got sort of a, a filter area where if we set the break up above, it's looking a little bit more bullish, we could expect that move up. If we're down below, a little bit more bearish, we could expect that move down. So happy to look at both of these areas right here. Um, you know, there's nothing to say now that we've made this wave up. The FTSE will not break up fail at these levels or fail at these levels, start to give us that double top, and then we'll see a much stronger move down. There's also the possibility for the breakup above, and then that stronger bullish movement, continuation of this first um, strong bullish wave. As a trader, we're not trying to predict. Um, you know, most of the time when I'm trading, um, I don't have, no, not most of the time, that's, that's inaccurate. So, Quite often, I don't have a definite target on a market. So when it's like this, um, we've already had our our analysis complete. So we're looking for the potential break of this area or this area. If we broke down below, we went over how it was already looking weak. We could expect the move back down to these levels with key support being down at 7430. And that has now happened. Now that, that has happened, we go back to waiting and watching to see what the market is going to do until it starts to give us that evidence. When it's not giving us that evidence, what I'm doing as a day trader is I'm picking out the key levels to trade day to day. And then I'm looking for the price action, not only on the daily time frame each day, but then on the lower time frames as the trade is potentially setting up. And I'm looking to take trades, you know, to make a run about one to one risk to reward, 1% return on account from these trades. And then on the higher probability trades, so the very high probability ones where I have that analysis, where I have the expectation of the move down, those are the ones where you want to sort of um, hold on, run your profits for a bit longer. Um, you know, those are the really high probability trades, but they don't happen all the time. I, I see lots of traders, you know, predicting every day they have to know if the market's going to go up, if it's going to go down, what target it's going to hit. That's not trading. That's just guessing. <laughs> it's just guessing. You know, we do not have access to enough information. It's just the truth. We don't have enough access to enough information. We couldn't even process enough information um, to get that correct. I mean, all you need to do is look at hedge funds. How many hedge funds go bankrupt? And if these guys with billions and billions and billions of pounds at their fingertips, some of the, the brightest minds in the world working with them cannot predict longer term moves to markets. How are we supposed to predict every day how it's going to move? We don't. We allow price action to tell us what it is we're doing. That's what it means to become a price action trader. It's not about being able to look at the chart and say, this is telling me that tomorrow we're going to move to this level. And then the next day you say, okay, now it's going to move to this level. It's going to hit this level. That's not price action trading. We're allowing the the, the candlesticks and what price has been doing to give us the, the clues. 
And then we're looking at things like, if this happens, this happens. So I'm not saying, you know, we've made that wave pullback to test support. Currently, that is potentially a bullish sign. But for me, I would need to see it breaking above this level, the previous swing, to then be more confident for that very strong move up into those all-time highs. At present, I'm more than happy to look for the weakness. If we start to break up above, I'd be happy to look for the support. Happy to look for resistance. If we break up above, I'd be happy to look for that support. It's all about positioning yourself um, for those highest probability trades. Okay, guys, so that is everything for this week on the FTSE. As always, I hope you find that useful. I hope you all have a good trading week next week. I'm James Orr, and thank you.